All right. Um, uh, I am calling to order the July meeting, July 13th meeting of the uh, Woodstock EDC. Um, the agenda is on the screen. Additions or deletions, citizen comments, minutes. Um, we have uh, six topics to discuss. Um, they're listed here. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? And I have one, which is to discuss uh, to discuss whether or not, in light of the flood and the potential upcoming flood tonight, uh, whether or not the EDC should take any steps to provide uh, financial support to businesses as we've done, as we did in the in the pandemic. Uh, I don't know that we have to make a decision tonight or but but the issue has been has we've been asked that question and so I suggested that we would put it on the agenda for discussion. Are there any other additions or deletions to the agenda? All right, hearing none. Um, uh, the, the for those of you that are not regular attendees, um, we typically have citizen comments at the time that we are uh, discussing uh, the topics that are on the agenda. And we almost always have time for those comments. We'll make sure that we do uh, tonight. Um, and so if you have a comment that is related to the items that are on the agenda, if you could hold it off until we come to that, uh, that would be helpful. Are there any citizen comments that are, um, that are not related to the items that are on the agenda? Peter, it looks like you were saying something. So it, for the, if you can either unmute yourself or raise yeah. your hand. Yeah. I have a very brief one. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah. Uh, which is simply to thank the EDC for its funding uh, for the second year of Book Talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, Marion Abrams, who is not here, was given the opportunity to introduce the keynote speakers at the at the kickoff or the, the main event that started Bookstock, um, which was a good way to recognize that publicly, the contribution that the EDC made and is consistent with our, our efforts over the last year or two to try to get the proper recognition from our different grantees. So Peter, we appreciate you doing that. Um, and thank you for that opportunity. I know Marion thought it was, she enjoyed it and, and it, was, uh, it was good for the EDC and as well as for Bookstock, so thank you. Um, can I add something, John, to that, just to Peter? This Please. is Deb. Um, yeah, great job. It was really wonderful being there. And Peter, um, I got a message from you, and we will get together so that we can put together the report to bring back to the EDC. This is Deborah, mm -hmm. and I look forward to that. Okay, good. Okay. Thanks. Are there any more citizen comments on subjects? that are not on the agenda currently. All right, hearing none, um, I see that Larry is on as well. So we have six members. Um, with apologies for shifting around the order a little bit, we have a couple of people who have to leave. And so what I'd like to do is to start with an update on the discussion we had last month about uh, a proposal to fund maintenance of certain activities in uh, certain physical assets in the downtown area from the, the downtown rejuvenation investment working group. Uh, and I think Joe is going to give a quick overview of that. And then I'd like to do the uh, item 5B, the new applications for housing. Um, and then we'll go to the pomfret select board uh, issues and so forth. So John, apologies for the, a bit of the delay, but we have some other timing issues that we're trying to manage. We'll get to the pompa thing as soon as possible. So Joe, would do you and Stuart would like to, well, Joe, why don't you go ahead? Okay, thanks, John. Um, um, I don't know if it was clearly stated in the last meeting, but I, I, I'll just give you uh, uh, an update and uh, hopefully I'm not being redundant. What, what we're proposing is, or suggesting is that, you know, there's a certain level of maintenance that hasn't been done in the village and it's never been really addressed. And so what Stuart and I 
And with the help of uh, Beth from Mason, she, she contributed some time to this also. Uh, we come up with some items that we feel is necessary to, um, to be aware of and what hasn't been done in the past and what we'd like to do is get it pretty much on schedule with whatever other maintenance is done in the town or the village. Um, and, you know, I can identify some of the issues like watering the flowers, cleaning the trash cans, sanding and urethane the benches and tables, uh, mulch and trees. And my particular favorite is maintenance of Teagle's Landing, uh, periodic umbrellas and benches. Um, these are kind of, uh, first, I think it's important to, to state that the EDC, and I've been approached by a few people, the EDC does not own any of this stuff. We don't own the, the tables, the benches, the, the umbrellas. What we did is what we contributed to the purchase of these for the village. So the village owns uh, all these issues that we're talking about. Um, and I don't think that's clear with a lot of people. Um, so what we're suggesting is um, a, a program where we would supplement the village budget so they would include these issues in the proper maintenance of it and do it for maybe two years, possibly three, until the village itself recognizes that um, this stuff has to be taken care of and that they will put it in their budget for them to maintain from that point on. Um, uh, so we're, we're, not, we're not suggesting that the EDC is going to go on an annual every year forever budget to take care of this stuff. All we're suggesting is this stuff has to be done. It hasn't been done. And we would like to help the village incorporate it in their maintenance budget, whatever that may be, for a couple of years until they do incorporate it and uh, be, have it be a part of their maintenance budget. And uh, of course, none of it is gonna be done or, or suggested until we speak with Eric Duffy, the town manager, uh, for his overview, his approval, his suggestions. Um, and then uh, it'll be up to him to present it to the trustees, you know, as the town manager, if he cho chooses. I mean, he, he may say, you know, I don't want anything to do with this thing. I, I don't think he will, knowing Eric. But it again, it'll be it would be the trustee's responsibility to take care of this stuff. And um, Eric hopefully will make the presentation to him. Um, one of the things John and I discussed earlier, and we, at this point I wasn't bringing up, some of the stuff uh, for this year has already been done. And um, has, I don't know if it's yet to be paid for. And John could probably answer that question. You know, we've already ordered six umbrellas, new umbrellas. Uh, four of them, I think we need immediately and two we're gonna have in, in case there's some damage to one of them over the year, or maybe we can replace them with next year with a couple of new ones. They may need, be, need to be replaced. Um, uh, John and I um, agreed to pay uh, Cy Benoit's crew to initially clean up uh, Teagle's Landing, you know, the spring cleanup thing. Um, and, um, and Roger, I'm not, if you're acquainted with Roger, <clears throat> pardon me, he's a guy you probably noticed has been out there sanding and urethaning all the tables. He's put three coats of urethane on all the tables. And, and I think the circular bench that goes around the tree, he's, uh, what he has left is the four tables that are left um, on that piece of property across the street 
for Montverde. Um, and so, you know, he'll be submitting a bill, uh, a statement, you know, for his time. Um, I, 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 I paid for some of your thing and so did the chamber. So, um, but those, those things, you know, um, are outside of this particular presentation or this budget that we've, we've been working on. Uh, you know, we just kind of kickstarted it this year and, and got things going. So uh, essentially that's it. Um, uh, hopefully we can vote on this at the next meeting and, uh, and, and get this thing in the works. So uh, by the fall, there'll be some activity and they'll stop thinking more seriously about maintaining it on a regular basis uh, from now on. Um, so if there are any questions, pop them. Any questions? Stuart, do you want to add anything? Or? I think I would just say that, that the things that we identified in this project are things that are relatively low cost and relatively high touch in a, in a sense that they have a big impact on how people perceive and, and, and spend time in the downtown. And there are things that over, over time, our, our sense is that periodically they fall through the cracks. It's no single person's responsibility. Um, and so what we're trying to do is sort of package everything in a proposal that will allow it to be transferred to the town um and maintained in good condition thereafter for the benefit of residents and visitors alike yeah uh, Stuart and i talked about this earlier today i um i, I think Stuart uh used a, a a perfect phrase to describe this it's more or less a bridge between now and where it should be a few years in the future and um it I, and i think that's a great way to look at it I have one brief comment, which is that when this proposal comes to us for a vote, my question to Eric will be, are you preparing, you know, over a couple of years, are you preparing to take over the physical responsibility of this? And yes. has the select board committed to pay for it? And if the answer to both of those two questions are yes, I would suggest we, we not waste our money and that we simply not fund this and make it a come to the select, I mean, the, I'm talking to the trustees, I apologize, come to the village trustees and, and, and say, look, you know, we need to, we need to discuss what the strategy here is, because we, you own this stuff, we don't. And, um, and we just need to decide that before we, you know, maybe the long term answer is that the EDC pays for this in perpetuity. Maybe the answer is that no one pays for it and that it doesn't get maintained. I think both of those solutions are wrong and that the, this, is a, this is a bridge to the right solution, but that's just my opinion, so. Okay, any other last comments? I have a question. Sure, Sorry. Deborah. go ahead. Can, can, they, can you put it in dollars and cents? Yeah, um, you know, what we're suggesting, what we kind of roughed out the numbers uh, based on some of the things that we're doing right now. Um, for example, water and flowers. We are, I think we already appropriated $6,000 for that. And that's being done. Um, uh, cleaning of trash cans, um, $1,150. Uh, cleaning and and urethane on all the tables, $1,350. Uh, mulching the trees, $100. Maintenance of Teagle's Landing, you know, 500 bucks. Um, I think that's relatively low figure for a, for a, a year long maintaining program. Um, uh, Cyber and water charges, I what John, 350, 375 for the initial cleanup. Yeah. Some that, of that. And that was a one shot deal. So over the years, it's going to be a little bit more than that, I would think. You know, there's a, there's a, the, the, the concept that we've got is it's about a $30,000 requirement over three yeah. years. And our idea is to step it down over time. So the, as the town, basically giving the town time to, to build these things into their budget, it's probably not as much of a financial issue as it is a management issue, making sure that the town has the people uh, identified and, and, and the, the interest in maintaining the property. Sure, sure I, I, I just wanted a sense of, of what the commitment is that we're making, so yeah, you know, right. that's all. Yeah, yeah and, on, and on that point, uh, well, what we're suggesting is that 
maybe the first year there's 15 or sixteen thousand dollars the second year maybe half of that and if there's an, a third year needed even even less money so that the the village can gradually get into this thing and and start uh, gearing up for what they should be doing um so it'd be kind of a dim diminishing thing over about two or three years There is a new document that describes these details. It was just posted to the EDC website under this meeting. So, and it'll be, it'll stay up there. Great, thanks. Any other comments or questions? Okay, Joe and Stuart, thank you. Um, the next topic is the, um, is a series of discussions about the housing, um, the housing incentive programs. We have new applications and also some some other topics that the housing team would like to discuss with us. And Trina, can I give you, uh, it's, I'm a little operationally constrained here as you may be able to tell. Yeah, I can, can share I give, my screen. Yeah, let me give you permission, hold on. Okay, second. great, thank you. I'm gonna cover the financials first, if that's okay. That's fine, go ahead, you have permission. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Oh, wait, I have to stop sharing, sorry. Okay, go ahead, try now. Yes, we can see it. Okay, can you see it? Perfect, yeah. okay. So um, I can't recall if it was the last meeting or meeting before that, that the EDC, um, and I believe the select board would be interested in this too, to see uh, what our numbers are for the housing uh, working group. So uh, we put this together. And I'll, I'll walk you through it, um, make sure everything uh, makes sense and is understood. So the top section here is basically just a dashboard of everything. Um, on the top, you can see a section called EDC funding. Uh, EDC funding, uh, those are the amounts that have been approved by the EDC. So for example, uh, AD Workforce in 2022 was approved for $30,000 worth of grants. And in 2023, it was approved to give out $70,000 worth of grants to applicants, making the total 100,000. Now, as you move through the line on the Woodstock, uh, I mean, the AD workforce, the next section, the, well, let me back up. So you can see the total on the EDC funding so far, including both everything from 2022 and 2023, the amount approved for housing grants was 254000 And you can see it's broken down by the different programs we have and expenses and the housing advisor. The next section over are housing grants. Uh, these are funds that have been committed uh, and reserved for applicants. So for again, again, for example, 80 workforce under the grant committed columns, $40,000. And if you were to look down at the section below in yellow, that 40,000 is our funds, $10,000 each that has been approved for these four applicants, uh, Tisha, Lori, Sean, and Kathy. You can see two of those were in 2022 and two of them were in 2023. So that's where that number is coming from. And then in the next column, uh, the 60,000 is what remains as uncommitted, <clears throat> which is the original total, the 100,000, basically minus what's been committed to give out to applicants. The last column uh, of data are the units. And the units is keeping tabs on what's been rented, what's in process, as far as you know, construction, permitting, all these things. So right now there's currently two that are actually occupied and rented. And there are seven that are in process, four in the ADU workforce program and three in the multi-unit program. Um, I'll say that the four in the ADU workforce, uh, a couple of those are coming close to rental status. Um, we should have one of those put into rental status, I believe in beginning in September um, and the other one potentially later in the year as well. So keeping tabs on those to get them shifted over to rented as soon as we can. A lot of it's contingent on um, just getting the work done, the permit process and some other lengthy processes to get to that point. But 
um, managing those closely. I <clears throat> uh, just wanted to see if you have any questions on this before, to, before I move to my next point. No? Okay. So uh, down below in the housing details, just to kind of show again, this is just a breakdown so you can see the actual applicants compared to the data up top. And I'm not going to dive into that except to kind of segue that the next conversation that we're going to have is regarding the multi-unit housing. We have an application for Dave McKay and Jeff Glue. Um, it's pending approval tonight. It'll be for four units, and I'll get into that in a minute. But the funds for their application <clears throat> was a request for forty thousand, ten thousand for each unit. <clears throat> so. The reason why I wanted to cover this first is so you could take a look at multi-unit up top on the dashboard. If you shift over to the column that says uncommitted remaining, there's $10,000 left in the multi-unit grant fund because we awarded $30,000 to the first applicant. So moving into our discussion with this next applicant will warrant some additional funds for that program or shifting of the existing funds that we already have out there. Any questions on that? Uh, Trina, where are these being built? Excuse me? Where are these 40 units gonna be? Okay, I can jump into that now. Let me <clears throat> let me show you that. And then we can get into the discussion of the financials. Um, do you see the overview? Did it pop up automatically? Yep. Yes. Okay. So the new application that we have uh, is for David McKay and Jeff Glue. They applied to the multi-unit housing program. The location of the home is at 4165 Heartland Hill. Bear with me just a moment. I mean, this is the house. I'm sure you've seen it. It's been for sale for a while. Um, yep. I believe they just closed on it uh, a week ago. And their plan is, and what they've applied for, is for the three-year term for the workforce rental, um, 40000 which is $10,000 per unit. And looking here at the home, they plan to create four units. Um, looking at the home here, you've got one unit on the first floor, a second unit on the second floor, a third unit in the basement, and a fourth unit in the red garage barn in the background. The property is on town sewer and well uh, water. Um, they plan to start working on it September. Um, they have some designs and they're working with zoning. Um, still don't have an estimated cost. We'd like to keep track of that just for case study purposes and things like that, but I'll gather that information as we move forward. Trina? Yes. Just so everybody knows that the, these two people are the ones who own the Shire. Correct. And the plan is when you walk in the front door here, the stairwell, they plan to block this off so that you'll have option to go into the first floor up or to the second floor. And the work, I believe the work that they're doing is something that could easily be backed out at a later date if this was to be a single family rent residents get, but meet the codes of housing and things that need to happen for multi-unit. Um, this next picture here, you can see more clearly the basement area. It has its own entrance, and that's where the, the third unit will be. And then the fourth unit will be right here in this other building. you have any questions on their application? Uh, Trina, I, I have a question. You said that you normally get the information about the total costs and so forth, but that you could get that later. I, I don't want to make any exceptions, particularly for a large project like this. So, I mean, I, I don't know what your application process is precisely at that level of detail. I know that you've been adhering to it nicely with all the other applicants. My only request is that we not we not start to backtrack and take shortcuts on those applications. And I'm not saying you're doing that, but is this uh, 
an official yeah. is this is this a properly not, filled that's in not official uh we don't even have that question on our application i mean i could if you want me to make it official no, 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 the reason no, no. what i'm just asking is this application adhering to the same standards as all of our other applications oh yes yes sir yes yes okay. um and the reason why we even start added that additional data point to these requests is because i think one we all have a common interest in knowing how much these types of things cost because case studies and moving forward it helps other people to gauge what potential projects might look like Agreed. um but in mean, curiosity but it's not on our full application um that's fine you've answered yeah thanks Gina. sorry you answered my yeah, question. no no you're okay no. so any questions on there any other questions on their application um before I shift back over to the financial page. Well, can you just explain there, there I believe, because I've talked to Dave uh, uh, about this, I believe that they're going to be using this for employee housing for the Shire. Yes, they're primarily, I mean, just like everywhere else, uh, they have a need for employee housing. They've been using their um, own rooms to do that. Um, but we've also had conversations with them that, um, if it's not used for their employees, if their employees do have housing already, then if there was an opportunity where they have availability or rental, then it would go to some, we could it would be applied to another local worker, not just the shire. And you have procedures in place to make sure that that's who they're renting it to. Yes, we have a six month uh, compliance check with everybody that's in the ADU or multi unit workforce housing where I. Uh, confirm with them that they have a tenant living there that's a local worker, uh, get a copy of that documentation for the file, um, and then future payments aren't done until you reach uh, uh, another year, I guess, of rentals. <clears throat> Larry, did you have a question? Uh, you're muted, sorry. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> I still can't hear you, Larry. No, there he goes. No, we can hear you now, Larry. Go ahead. Um, okay. do, do you uh, uh, actually physically inspect these properties beforehand? Um, I usually do, and I will. They just purchased this on like a week ago. Um, so Initially, I did a video meeting with them and talked about their plans. That's how I know about what they're going to do with their property and how they're going to break it down into the four units. Um, but I will be meeting with them to do it on site as well. So they didn't um, do that until they own the property. So right, right. Um, the unit number three looked like it was totally underground, and I just I don't know whether we get into that question or or not. Um, but I'd be interested in your looking at it. Can I, I also wanted to back up to your original, the, the, um, uh, the um, expense sheets that you had. Can, can you just summarize what those nine units, how much have we invested for or potential to invest for the nine units? Let's see here. As far as your basement question, I'll make note of that and I'll take a look at that to see what their plans are as far as uh, uh, accessibility, legality, that type of thing. It, yeah, I don't, I don't know where, how much we get into that. And it seems well, like Larry, that we will get into. I believe we will get into it for fire safety. Everybody has Correct. to show a fire safety certificate, and egress methods are important with fire safeties. So it, they will have to pass that test. Correct. Thank you, Jill. Usually it means that one of the windows has to be of a size that you can exit from. Okay. So let's see here. Um, Sorry, Larry, before we go back to the finances, Larry, could we just, just one last question on the application itself. Trina, it sounds like you have not gone through part of the normal process of making the physical inspection. And so I guess... Um, I, I, if we were to approve this today, and I'm, and I think I, I know this, I, I, I'm in favor of this, of these units and, and giving them the incentive, I would want to make a contingent on you completing the physical inspection. And that's why I'm asking if there are any other aspects of the process which you have not uh, 
undertaken yet. And I would want to make that approval contingent on you undertaking them. No, just the site inspection. And usually, I mean, I'm, I, I do it as a way to meet the folks and see what their plans are and things. I'm not an official, uh, I don't have an official capacity in that regard other than working for the housing advisor and I'm not doing a safety inspection, but I do note some things that I know just from prior experience and mention it to them when I go there. But our process is to have a in person, an in person yes. inspection. Yes. So I, yes. my, my request, yeah, okay. So, Got it. Yeah, that will take place. Larry, you were going to ask a question about the financial, or maybe about the financials, if you want to go back to that, Trina. Right. I, yeah, I, I was unable to unmute myself in time. Um, I was just wondering, I had a little trouble understanding how much we have committed uh, or paid out for the nine units. So I just wanted to do a basic math thing of nine divided by what? So um, I'm back on the financial page. Can you see this, everybody? Yes. So if you look at the grant committed, we've committed 153,000. So I'm guessing the math you're trying to do is if you were to take the 153 and divide it by the nine units, what's the cost of each of those units? So what's the 254 then? That's the total that the EDC has approved, but we haven't received application to utilize all of those funds, only the funds that are in the grant committed where we've received an application and they're actually moving forward. Got it, okay. okay. So it's nine divided by 153. Yeah, the inverse of that. 153 yeah. divided by nine, comes up to 17, so I was like, no, Okay, words. thank you. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't get my phone a lot to do the math for you. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I can. In our do head, it's probably sixteen, seventeen k. So just to jump to, I think the decision that you want us to make, the the item in red here on this is, you know, we we've only got ten thousand dollars left in the multi unit program. Correct. This this is a request for forty thousand dollars. We could we could we're thirty thousand dollars short. Um. Uh, my suggestion, but we have $60,000 uncommitted in the ADU workforce program. Those programs are different only in, in, in a, on a meaningless dimension, which is the number of units requested. <laughs> the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jill and Trina, but the, the two programs are identical in every other way. Is that correct? Uh, in that, in the amount per unit is the same. The uh, term, terms of rental are the same. The compliance issues are the same. Yes. Right. So yes. I, I think rather than rather than ask, so that we basically have unused, we have seventy thousand dollars of capacity remaining for ADU units. And my suggestion is is that we simply repurpose uh, thirty thousand dollars of the ADU workforce program to the multi-unit program to be able to make this grant. I'm not suggesting that we would never increase the amount. The ADU program is getting some real traction. I think we're likely to still have a housing shortage even if we were to spend all these funds, but I'd rather, my suggestion is to deal with that issue when we run out of total funds rather than, or at least when we run out of ADU funds, <laughs> rather than make an artificial distinction between technically two programs that are trying to do exactly the same thing. I don't know how other people feel about that. I think it makes sense. I agree with that as well. As well as I do. Same. Okay. Um, okay, great. Mary, uh, we're lucky to have a select board member on the, on the phone here. I don't, well, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, so you don't have to answer. But if you can give us advice, do you feel that that this? Well, actually, we have to go. We have to go to the select board to get this grant approved anyway. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, we do not. We do not have to. So um, I guess yeah. the question is whether or not we would feel that. Um, well, why don't I just have a conversation with with uh, 
with Ray, who's the acting chair of the select board, unless Mary wants to make a comment right now. I don't think the select board is even going to need to meet to discuss this, but I will in the next couple of days speak to him about it. If we decide to recommend this grant tonight, I don't think we have to go to the select board because we're allocating funds from one program to a essentially identical program. I don't think Correct. we need to waste their time. I would agree with that. That's... But, but I think, but as a courtesy, I, I will ask Ray, you know, to. Okay. To, to, I will do that without him, you know. So. so um, okay, that sounds like a good, good plan. If you guys, if the housing group is comfortable with that, then let's just take an uh, uh, official vote. I, I would make a motion then to approve this grant for $40,000 contingent on the completion of a physical visit which is part of our standard process and contingent on the select board's agreement to shift $30,000 from ADU program A to ADU program B. John, is there a contingency involved where uh, they have to uh, pass all inspections, fire, health, all that sort of stuff? That's already yeah. part of, that's already part of the program. Yes. Okay. I second your motion. Yes. All right. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. Aye. Okay. Did anyone not vote? It was on the EDC? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? All right. Okay. Trina Great. And Jill, was Thank there, you. Was there anything else, Jill, that you wanted? Oh. Oh, yes, we did. We wanted to uh, tell you about something that we're working on. So do you remember when we were went to the select board? And they wanted us to look at a program for existing landlords who are renting to local workers. So we just wanted to tell you we're working on it and we'll present that to you by the next meeting. We have some thoughts and ideas and are putting together a proposal. Okay, thank you. And can I add to that? I had that on my note to ask you for an update on that. Thank you for providing <laughs> it. Um, yeah. I, I, for those that don't remember, there's, there's a bit of a quandary here. Um, and I guess I would just like, we don't need to have a vote on this, but I feel a need to take a certain action, um, I guess as the chair. And I just like your input on this. It's not a decision that we'd be making. Well, sorry, no, I suppose it is. So I guess I would ask for a vote for this. After, if you recall, we had an, an there's been one more applicant into the program, an applicant, a homeowner from Bridgewater, who was proposing to, was asking for the ADU incentive of $10,000 to create an ADU unit to rent to a local employee of Woodstock. It turns out it was a teacher, I believe, in the schools. Um, the EDC voted to recommend that grant. When it was brought in front of the select board, they at first agreed after a discussion about whether or not to provide funds to building owners that were outside of Woodstock, but who agreed to rent to local workers in Woodstock, um, they agreed to provide the um, incentive. The, a week later, the select board asked for a follow-up meeting and reversed their decision. It, well, it didn't reverse the decision, put their decision to fund this grant on hold until the housing working group would do certain analyses to look at the impact of, of giving grants to someone in Bridgewater. And that's the analysis that Jill was just describing and that I guess we'll hear an update on next month. In the meantime, in the week between when the select board approved the grant and when they rescinded it or postponed it, the owner of the building signed a lease with the Woodstock employee. And she then spoke to Trina briefly and, and I volunteered to speak to her. And she basically said, you know, look, you've put me in a very difficult position. You told me that the select board approved it. I went ahead and acted on that communication. You then rescinded the grant. That's not fair. And I said that I would bring that up with the select board, um, which I think is the only fair thing to do. I, at the meeting where the, ED, where the select board postponed, I don't wanna say rescinded because they left open the possibility that they could give the grant at a later date once Jill came back 
with the, with the analysis. But in the mean, but they did, we did not know that she had signed the lease and committed it based on that. I believe that that would have influenced the select board to say, okay, we'll give the grant in this, but don't make any more grants. But I don't know what they would say. So I would like to go back to the select board and recommend that as a matter of what I'll call good faith, that we make that grant. It is, we recommended it in the first place. We did not, they did not realize, and we did not realize that that the person had acted on our approve on the select board's approval. So does anyone, could, the, I guess the only I'd, thing I would, John, the only thing I would say about that is, um, I would, I, I completely agree with you. Completely agree with you. It is not fair that, um, uh, that it seems like, uh, the rug got pulled out from underneath this person's feet. I would really like to know how the how the select board feels about what they originally proposed or originally approved, because it's obvious, I think, that Woodstock businesses need workers. And workers cannot afford to live in Woodstock. Simple as that. And I think we all know that. I'm, I'm probably hashing over some old stuff that we've talked about in, between ourselves and our neighbors and other workers and other employers. And so given that, is it possible that the select board can be encouraged to allow their first approval vote to go through. Well, Joe, I think that uh, in this particular case, litigating the, well, well, sorry, what I'm going to ask them to do is to approve this specific grant. That's yes. exactly what I'm going to go back of and course. ask them to do. I'm not going to go back and ask them to determine what their policy is because that's going to await the analysis that Jill and the team are doing. Okay. But, but, but I mean, and I, and there's no reason. Yeah. So, so I'm going to ask them to reduce. So I guess I would like to make a motion. Uh, sorry, Larry, your hand is up. Yeah. I just, um, I, I, I want you to go respectfully to the select board, but they made a decision. People acted on it. They have a right to act on it. And they acted on it, uh, you know, at what point could they have rescinded that uh, vote? And at, uh, you know, a month later, two months later, three months later, I mean, yeah. lots of good, people good point, Larry. Could, have, could have relied oh. on it. They, oh. have to, they, well, they, they happen to have relied on it uh, within, uh, somebody happened to rely on it within a week, but it was their decision, unless there's something about select board decisions not being final after, until- Well, what, what they said, Larry, was that, um, the, the the information we presented, in fact, it was something I said, misled them. And so they made their vote based on that information. And when I apologized and gave them full information, they wanted to change their vote. Yeah, right. So there were, there were two, yeah. There, there they would have approved it if it included existing landlords, but because it didn't include existing landlords, but did include some of the surrounding towns, they rescinded their vote. Yeah, so so there were there were there. This is tricky. That's a good point. This is tricky because there were two gaps in information. It, the first gap of information was they they approved it based on when based on a lacking a piece of information. After they approved it, we gave them the additional information. Uh, it was a it was an oversight. It was a mistake. They then they then made a second decision to rescind the grant, also based on missing information in that case the information that the person had acted on it so i'll summarize all of that all of that to the select board and ask them to consider maybe the thing to i it's a fair point that you're bringing up jill and it, and it weakens the case i guess for mm -hmm. it wasn't just a mind it, they didn't just change their mind right I think the best thing to do here, rather than the ask the EDC to opine, is to simply, exp well, I don't know, should, should we take a vote on this and get the opinion of the EDC, or should we simply ask the select board? I suppose we should, we should have our own opinion. 
whatever that opinion is. I have, so. John, I have a question of Joe, if I may ask it. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, you just made a statement, Joe, when you said it wasn't a question of them changing their mind. What was it? They did, they made a vote based on yes. certain information. Yes. And, and so when they were presented with the correct information, they wanted to change their vote. Okay, thank you. But the information points were two totally different things. One was yeah. existing landlord and one was living outside of Woodstock. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Patrick, I have a question. go ahead. Uh, so what made them change their mind? I know that was, uh, you, you mentioned these two things, but how did it affect the decision? It's not clear to me. Uh, I'd have to go back to my notes to find out. I can't remember. I can tell. What didn't they like? That what there were the the program does not provide incentives for existing landlords, people who have been renting to local employees for a long time and who have not added anything to the housing stock. The program does not give them an incentive. Like someone, you can't come and say, I'm John Spector. I've been renting to Sam Di Natale, who works at, at Montvert for five years. I want the incentive. We don't give an incentive it, for that. The incentive our, to do what, John? Expand the apartment? Build another one? To do what? I don't get $10,000. And the reason I don't get $10,000 is because I haven't done anything new, just as you're suggesting. Let, let me just explain. Well, that Jill, makes sense, doesn't it? It does make sense, but sorry, Jill told them that the program does cover that. Oh. When we told them that it in fact doesn't cover it, which is correct, and in my view, I think in your view too, and Jill, makes sense. It they said, well, wait a minute, if you're not gonna, you're, so you're telling us you're not gonna give it to someone from Woodstock who's been doing the right thing for the last five years, but you are gonna give the incentive to someone from Bridgewater. They said, we want to put that on hold. We want to do some and understand some more things and have asked the housing group to gather some information and do some analysis, which is what Jill and the team are doing. Well, you know I think one of the things we have to consider you know here is that- like to me, John? It sounds like to me that it got spun. I mean, there was a spin put on this thing that really wasn't accurate or right. applicable. And, 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 the, and the reason and what was happening but the, the background to all of this is that existing there are some existing landlords who are doing the right thing who are saying hey how come we're not being incentivized when we're doing the right thing and re, and not doing short-term rentals can't you consider us and there was a feeling uh, that they should be considered before somebody living outside of Woodstock given where the grant money comes from well, right. I, I, you know, Joe, Joe, hold on, Joe, hold on, because Patrick was in the middle of something. So give him right. a chance and then we can go back to you. Patrick, go yeah. ahead. Okay. It, it seems to me that uh, if somebody's already renting to, 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 I guess what we, we, do we know or not know that they're an employee, a local employee? They've already been doing it. The idea of this program was to increase yes. space, not, thank people who have already been doing it. Right. I mean, they've already so, been, they've so already been not, doing it. We're not arguing about the principle. We all agree about the principles. We all here agree about the principles of what the housing programs are about. There is some disagreement in the select board about the prioritization of funds. And, and the program that uh, Trina is working on investigating now does not include grant money. It actually looks at tax relief property tax relief so that there is some money, there could be some money for existing landlords that doesn't come out of grant money. So that's what we're working through to see what could actually happen. So that maybe everybody could get something without um, changing the principles of what we're doing. But what doesn't make sense to me, Jill, is that the purpose of the program is to establish, and I'll use the word create, additional housing for workers in Woodstock, for Woodstock workers. Now, if, if they're already living in Woodstock, 
There's no, I mean, I'm sure that if we could expand this program just in Woodstock, no problem. Everything would be cool. But, you know, there isn't anything to expand in Woodstock right. at but, an affordable you know, price. You know, but Joe, yeah, jo, we, we all agree on that. You're, right. We all agree on that. So let me make it. I just don't understand it. But, I, I fair, fair enough. Yeah. Well, today, today it was announced that there is one less select board member on the select board who will not get to vote on this next time. So, all right. So let me let me make a let me make a motion specifically, and, and let me kind of incorporate this discussion into the motion. Given and, and 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 not every EDC member has spoken, so feel free to disagree to vote against this if you don't agree. But my motion is, given that the ob explicit objective of the EDC is to increase the yes. number of housing units. Yes. And given that the select board rescinded this particular grant or postponed it without the knowledge that the applicant had already acted on the original approval, that the EDC recommends that the select board re unrescind this grant and that we give it to this particular applicant to create another ADU unit for Woodstock employees, we will contain, we will not make, accept any further applications from non-Woodstock homeowners until as agreed upon, the select board receives the further analysis that they requested from the housing working group. And at that time in the future, we will discuss whether or not other non-Woodstock homeowners could receive a benefit or not, but that we ask that the, that the EDC recommends that the select board re-reverse this decision. And so th that's my motion. Is there a second for that before we discuss it? Yes, I'll second it. All right, is there any further discussion about this? Really, all I'm asking is to go to the select board and to say the EDC recommends that you do this and then they will decide what, what to do. Okay. So is there any further discussion about this motion? All right, all those in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Deborah, we can't see you. Aye. All right, any opposed? Okay, all right, thank you. I have that guidance and input and we will. And yeah. move thank you for that. Thank you for bringing all that up, John. All right, thank you. Very good report and great progress at now. We're now looking at, uh, with the approval of this recommendation, we would, and if it's approved by the select board, we would now have incented to create 13 units of housing, um, mm -hmm. which is, uh, which also, by the way, Larry, it's 13 units of housing for 109 for $200,000, which brings the average cost down uh, to below 17,000. It's because some of that was fixed, basically it's a fixed cost. So we're yeah. down to 16 <laughs> or $15,000 a unit. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda, um, and I hope you can all hear me. My battery, of course, nearly ran out, so I had to get rid of my speaker. John, are you still driving at 70 miles an hour? Yeah. No, no, 60, 65. I, I don't, you know. I, I, I can, you know, I got my left hand on the wheel. All right. Um, those were the two time sensitive ones. I know we have a number of people here from Pomfret um, who have been waiting patiently to either listen or to contribute to the discussion. Um, there are two two things that, um, th there are two uh, pieces of information that I just wanna share with the EDC. Um, the first took place uh, in between our last meeting and now, um, which is that we received the letter from, John, was the letter from you just uh, as the chair? Uh, I signed it, it was a joint letter from the, the board. Right, and you are the chair of the Pomfret Select Board, is that right? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So we received a letter officially from John um, and, and and in parallel, Kathy Emmons and Mike Doten, uh, I think were, maybe one other person sent um, sent an email, basically um, uh, explaining the, uh, the extreme uh, pressure that visitors uh, are imposing on the town of Pomfret, but specifically certain private properties and um, misbehavior of trespassing, you know, misbehavior, just uh, really on just lots of inappropriate behavior. 
And their request was quite simple, which was to ask the EDC to stop publicizing the names and locations of private properties in Pomfret. Sleepy Hollow Farm was one of them. Uh, there was an, another one and just a general principle that in our marketing, as we try to attract people to Woodstock and explain to them what they can do and so forth, that telling people that this farm on this road at this geotag location, you know, is a great place to get a photograph is uh, creating or is helping to create a lot of this pressure. Um, this was sort of an emergency. Well, I, I felt, I guess I acted, um, we, we convened the marketing working group. We discovered that in fact, we were doing those things. We're not the only ones to do it. In fact, we may, our, our work in doing this may have no effect, very little effect on the social media community, but we were in fact doing that. Uh, and the marketing working group and I agreed that we would stop doing that. And we communicated to John and a couple of other residents of Pomfret that we would immediately stop doing it and that we would cleanse our, um, that we would cleanse our website and social media. It might take us a week or two, but that we would find the other references to it and that we would stop identifying places by name and, and providing their address or geolocation or, or, or both. And that's been done, John. And, and that has been done, right. And, and I would simply ask John, and I think Kathy is on, um, uh, or Meg perhaps, and um, ask anyone who sees those kinds of things still appearing under the Woodstock Chamber slash EDC website to please let uh, Beth or uh, now Greta, who's going to sorry, this is an inadvertent way of announcing this, but Greta is going to replace Patrick as the EDC member on the on the uh, working group uh, since she started to work with some of the merchants on marketing things anyway. And so please let um, Beth or Greta know and they'll make sure to, um, to uh, you know, to, to cleanse that information. Or, you know, we're, we're, we think we've we found everything, but if, if, if other people see something, we'll happy to remove it. That's the first piece of information. And I hope that the working group and my discussion about it and decision to, to do that, it was unanimous. There was no real debate among the group. So we did not convene a special EDC meeting. I hope people are comfortable with that. I think we everyone felt that it was the right thing to do. Secondly, now today, or, or in the last, maybe it was yesterday, I, um, I apologize. I'm at a campground in Rhode Island. And so I'm, I'm only <laughs> sporadically connected. Um, today or yesterday, we received a, a request uh, that the EDC consider helping to fund some of the uh, some of the work that that might be done to restrict access to Cloudland Road. We haven't been part of that proposal. I don't exactly know what the status is, um, and uh, but we've been asked to to help to financially support that or to consider that. Um, we haven't been given a specific number. Uh, the proposal was you know, not in a final form that we could vote on because there is no specific number. And I don't think that the folks who sent it to us expected us to allocate money tonight, but that is something that they have asked about. Before I open this up for discussion, I just want to explain that and I explained this in a letter to Kathy that that we have established a process as we all know of three months ago to spend the months of May through December studying the issue of the impact of tourism how does it help us but in, and in particular how does it what are the problems that it causes what can we do about those problems who should pay for it and that we're in the midst of that. We're about to launch some surveys that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, we, we probably can't decide to allocate funds to a particular Pomfret program until we know what other steps we may need to invest in. Maybe we need to rent more bathrooms. Maybe we need to hire police to keep people off Cloudland Farm. Maybe we need to increase restaurant capacity in some way. Maybe we need to improve signage in the village or on Cloudland Farm Road or, or whatever. 
there are many things that we might do in order to ameliorate the impact of tourism. And we're going to put that list together over the next couple of months. We're gonna get feedback from the surveys over the next couple of months. But that I didn't think, and I was not speaking for the EDC, I just said my personal opinion and I'll share it with you now. I didn't think that we would be in a position tonight to approve any of those initiatives, but that we would definitely include their request on our list of possible things that we could do. And then we would make a decision. I think it will be in October or November-ish. You know, once we've done our analyses and gotten the survey results back, we will I promise that we would include their request as something that we could fund and that we would make a decision once we had all of the options in front of us. So that's kind of the background. Um, you know, we, we didn't have citizen comments uh, at the beginning because again, we, we asked to wait. So I don't know, John, if you or I'm not sure if that's Meg or Kathy or anyone else uh, from the community would like to make some citizen comments about this issue, you're welcome to. If you can just unmute yourself or John, go ahead. Yeah, just a thank you for um, taking those references off the, the website out of your marketing. I mean, largely, it, you know, how much of it's contributed by your marketing, you know, one will never know, that's for sure. But um, it's certainly been made worse by social media over the last, you know, three to six years. Prior to that was always super busy up there, challenging, but was manageable. And, you know, the last three to six years, people have just been coming by, I don't know, adventure to count them a thousand cars a day, maybe just making it physically impossible to to get up up through there and we've haven't nailed down exactly what we're going to do there this year but potentially closing the road to to through traffic um which will require uh a couple of police officers one at Cloudland Road and then up at the top and then potentially down on Barber Hill and Comfort Road but um would be great if we got some outside funding, but um, I understand your constraints too. So, are there, are there any other citizen comments on this before the um, before EDC members comment? Because again, we didn't provide time at the beginning. Hi, John. It's Kathy Emmons here. Um, I I just jumped on this meeting uh, a few minutes ago on Meg's phone and. I just want to make sure that the council did get to see the letter that Mike and I had drafted. That's all. Okay. Uh, the, the, the letter today, Kathy, or the letter that you sent a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, the one from today, just, just requesting assistance. Okay. All right. I, um, huh. There is a letter from you on the website. I think it's the letter from two weeks ago. So I, if, if it's all right, if I post it tomorrow, and, oh yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I will. Um, I'm pretty sure that I I did not post that one yet. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, and if I can find a pen, I, I will make sure to post it. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I encourage people also to read the earlier letter. It's it's all on the EDC website under today's meeting. You know the the uh, upcoming meeting date. Um, you didn't post uh, I just it. encourage you to read the two letters. It will give you a, a good factual sense of the situation and what the, our, our friends in Pomfret are facing and what they are asking. Any, any, there's no decisions for the EDC to make tonight. Um, going forward, we will promise to keep this on our agenda and deal with it at, you know, as soon as we're ready to deal with any other proposals to invest in, in the tourism related initiative. Any comments, Joe? Well, and then Patrick. It's just it's just not clear to me what what are they required to fund for? What, what do they need money for? What do they want to do with it? Well, well the letter says that they're using it to hire police and they're they've they've indicated a cost per day for police coverage this is what John had said, I guess, to police at, at both ends of the road. So it'll, it'll be for, for police salaries to direct Traffic and um, is that correct? That's For right. sure. or potentially traffic control. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
A any other comments or questions, Patrick? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, we, like I said, we, we scrubbed our social media and our website. We're the teeny, teeny, teeny fraction of what's out there between Boston, New York, Connecticut. Uh, you know, there's a ton of social media out there. Uh, I'm not sure what, with what we did and we're happy to do it is going to make much of a difference, uh, sadly. Which is presumably why they're, uh, yeah. Greta? Well, I just want to say thank you for uh, coming, John and Kathy, and um, sharing your experiences. And I think that um, also, you know, going forward in our marketing, I think overall, not only Pomfret and Cloudland Farm, but a lot of the area, I think everyone would probably appreciate more acknowledgement of private as private. And, you know, that that should just be part of a future campaign of, of marketing. Just, you know, that, that should just kind of be automatic, I think. And I think Greta, th those ideas, you know, th that uh, that as one broad concept, there's a specific application in that we're talking about on Cloudland Road tonight. But there will be other applications, perhaps in the village. We have other examples of invasion of private property in the village. Um, those kinds of initiatives to try to identify what could be done, um, whether we can do it all or, but what what could be done is one of the next steps. Uh, as soon as we get the surveys out, I think we'll start to develop a list of those ideas, including what you said and including what John and Kathy have requested. Mm -hmm. All right, are there and any other comments? We've Sorry. also talked about on the website, creating a, uh, a page or a blog uh, that talks about exactly this privacy and, and being respectful and, and so forth to make that a, a standout uh, issue. Uh, you know, we, we will do as much as we can there. Yeah, signage. I mean, there's lot, there's lots of yeah, and the, the, yeah, we, we need to brainstorm about those things. All right, any other comments? All right, John and Kathy, thank you for coming. You know, you go to your own select board meetings and then come to ours as well. We're we're happy to have you on this unhappy <laughs> issue, but we're glad that you're participating. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate it. Okay, the. Um, we have on our agenda progress reports from the child care providers. Um, not all of the child care providers were able to make it tonight after they had all confirmed, but then the floods uh, affected several of them in significant ways. Um, and so we thought that it was most useful to have all of them give an update at the same time. Um, and, and so hopefully we'll be able to do it at the next meeting. Todd is... Um, may not be, we're going to, we will have an update within the next two months from the child care providers as to how they are doing on their program to expand capacity. Um, but we decided to postpone it from tonight. And we're working on whether it's the next meeting or the meeting after that. Uh, the last item on the agenda, unless there are any other working group updates at the end, but the last item on the agenda is the final discussion of our three surveys. There the three, so just as a reminder, just to get everyone in the, in the right mindset, we're going to conduct these three surveys of merchants, of visitors, and of community members. Residents. We're gonna get the results back. And then in parallel and following that both, we're going to brainstorm about what, if any, actions to take to ameliorate, address the problems that people see with tourism and the benefits people see from it. We'll then look at those and decide in the context of future year's budgets, whether we want to allocate funds to that and where those funds should come from. Should it come, should we take it out of the marketing budget? Should we have to tell the town that they have to pay for it? Should we not do any of them? Should we reduce the market? You know, should we add it to the marketing budget and take it from some other place in housing or, or events or downtown rejuvenation? Some mix of all of the above, whatever. But the sequence is we take the surveys we brainstorm about, we, which, will, which will identify what the most important issues are. We brainstorm about what the solutions might be and lay out a, a kind of a menu of what we could do. 
And then we make decisions about funding for marketing in the future, strategy for marketing, and investment in the impacts of tourism all at one time as part of our 2024 you know, budget process when we allocate funds so that we can make trade-offs. It's just the same reason that we try to evaluate almost all of the grants at one meeting so that we can trade off, you know, is book stock a better investment than something else? In the same way, we're trying to do the same thing with our, with this tourism initiative, get all of the information, lay out all of the possibilities and then decide which things to fund and how. So tonight, we're gonna hopefully have the final discussion of these three tourism surveys. The survey of visitors and the survey of merchants have not changed since the last meeting. And I and no one has provided feedback. Well, sorry, no one has provided feedback to me on the visitor survey. And Greta, I don't believe anyone has provided feedback to you on the merchant survey, or, or perhaps they have, is that correct? I just received a couple of a thumbs up kind of. Okay, uh, sorry, I, no one has suggested it. No one has suggested any changes. Sorry, Patrick, go ahead. I, I know that some of the businesses uh, have had questions. Uh, I've been speaking with different people on that. So, uh, you know, I tried to have a bunch of people here tonight, uh, but with what's going on, I think a lot of them just aren't capable of being being here. But uh, I, I think it would be wise to reach out to the to the business group that has kind of uh, been pulled together by Beth uh, and Jeffrey and a couple other people. And, and maybe just give them one last pass at that. Yeah, Beth, is, is Beth here? She is. Hey, Beth, um, I did email you and Jeff the, the, new, um, the new draft a few weeks ago. Did you receive that? Beth, you're muted. Is it on the website? It is. The, the new draft is on the website, yep. And okay. in my email, I just actually linked to the website to the, um, the I link. I printed on. everything out. So, oh, great. Um, we have done one. I mean, we did we did conduct our own survey um, of merchants uh, that I think you were part of, Greta. So that that's been completed, and we will. I'll go. Uh, look at the next one. Yeah. Okay, great. I sent it to Jeffrey too uh, a week ago. Great. Yeah, he was on my original email of the when I updated. Uh, All right. Well, it, it sound it, it, it sounds like sorry. Whoops. Um, I'm trying to get the list. It sounds like there's a little bit of work to do on the merchant survey to just coordinate. And this has been the process. Greta is part of has been part of that working group, at least, you know, in and out, hopefully. Um, so so I don't think I think the EDC in our last meeting felt, that, you know, generally comfortable with the questions. And if the merchants wanted to ask specific questions, that was fine. And, you know, we could, since it's a survey of merchants. <laughs> so I think we can delegate what I'm going to propose at the end of this discussion is that we move ahead with the visitor survey as drafted, that we delegate to Greta the final decision, Greta and with input from the merchants. And Patrick, if you'd like to be part of that, that's great. But Beth, Patrick, and Greta, Greta, you can, we can delegate to you the finalization of that survey. And what I wanted to talk about tonight is the survey of the community, which has been significantly changed based on feedback from a couple of members of the EDC. John, before you switch to that one, uh, the visitor survey, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was part of our platform uh, is anyone who signs up you know that we collect their data uh would be to take the survey that has been created uh turn it into an email and we haven't determined the spacing yet on it but have that go out on an automatic basis for anybody who signed up so we'll, we'll constantly be getting that feedback exactly that's what i was hoping you would do yeah and we talked loosely about a strategy for using our current platform that's a great way to do it so yes 
So are, before, if, 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 can we move, are people comfortable with the, with the, since there wasn't feedback, I mean, we can't discuss this forever. These two surveys, the visitor survey and the merchant survey are fine. We, we all agreed not to have the exploding head work plan, which would go into more intensive approaches to develop survey vehicles, um, you know, uh, uh, focus groups and, and so forth. So is, is anyone uncomfortable with moving ahead with those two surveys as we just discussed? And then we'll, we'll turn to the community survey. All right, Greta, I, I have the visitor survey, you have the, which is will stand as is, and you can basically move forward with the merchant survey once you've finalized the thing. Great. All right, what I'd like to do is now share the survey on the, for, that we would send to the community, which I think is the, perhaps the most sensitive one um, since it's a survey of all of us and all the people who are talking to us. This one has been significantly overhauled. Marion, unfortunately, um, can't make it tonight. Um, it, and um, the, the, she had a, a very important personal commitment that she got the date wrong on, or maybe I'm not sure what happened, but she, I would have made the same decision. She couldn't be here tonight. But she and Larry and I have been working on this. And I think we may have had a little bit of feedback from one other person, I can't recall. What I'd like to do, and I'm sorry, I couldn't post this. This is a, a link. I'm just gonna take you through the survey. The survey basically asks nine questions after, uh, sorry, uh, uh, eight questions after it just figures out who you are, basically where, where you live. And it basically is asking about what are, the pro what are the benefits of tourism? And mostly it focuses on what are the problems with tourism? And in terms of what are the problems of tourism, it asks basically, it helps us to figure out a couple of things. One is how, why, how widespread are the problems? So we're gonna ask people, have you personally experienced this particular problem? And we're gonna give them a short list of five or six things. Has it ever happened to you? And how often does it happen? So, so how widespread is it? Is this a handful of people who are seeing things and complaining or is it widespread? And we're not asking people whether they think something is a problem or whether they've heard it's a problem or whether they're, we're asking them, have they experienced it? And we're asking them how much they care that they've experienced it. So for example, I, just as, a perfect, as an example, I've experienced people taking pictures of our house or actually even sitting on our front step and taking a picture of it. And it doesn't bother me at all. It's perfectly reasonable for someone else to have experienced that and for that to have bothered them a whole lot. That's fine we would answer the questions like different. So we're asking those questions. What have you seen and how have you, uh, have you experienced it? And then we're asking a question in particular about one of those problems on our list of five or six, which is inappropriate behavior. And I think the Cloudland Farm discussion is an example of it, but it's not the only example. And the type of inappropriate behavior, depending on what it is, really could, could potentially call for very different solutions. So we're diving a little bit deeper on the inappropriate behavior question to try to find out again, how often have you seen these behaviors? And then we're basically asking questions to begin to help the EDC, what should we do about this? What are the different ways in which we could address this? Um, what are the most important things? Where should we start? Should we start with the lack of bathrooms or should we start with the lack of restaurants or should we start with inappropriate behavior? What's or should we start with something else as an open-ended question? What else do you think could be? Um, and then how should we, how, if we decide that we want to allocate funds to this, who should, how should we pay for it? So we're kind of getting that feedback. Now on any survey, there's always an instinct to say, well, if the survey says we should do X, then the EDC has to do X. That's not how I'm gonna vote. I'm gonna to listen to the survey, let it inform me, and then I'm gonna do what we, I took, we all took an oath to do, which is to do what we think is in the best interest of Woodstock. And that might be what people vote for and it might not be. So this is information from us. So just remember that when this, with, this is a survey, this is the first part of the, of the process. It's not the decision of what the EDC will do. All right, given that, let me just share, let me share, show you the survey and then I'll ask for comments. Let me know if you can see this. Yep. 
So there's a bit of an, oops, sorry, let me get this out of the way. There's a bit of an introduction, um, take you about five minutes, which is how long it should take. Um, it could, uh, this, the platform actually measures it. The first time I took it, it took two minutes and 20 seconds, but I was really familiar with it. We use this information. Here's what, you know, we're trying to better understand whether people are satisfied with the current situation. If not, what are their concerns and what we might do to address them? We'll use this information to help us decide whether and how and how much to spend on marketing Woodstock and whether and how and how much to allocate funds to address the concerns to give everyone, merchants, residents, visitors, a better experience. And finally, please try to reflect your own personal experiences and your own opinions, not what you have heard from others. We're interested in each person's viewpoints. So the first three questions we don't have to spend time on, they try to figure out where you live. Yes, you're a full-time resident, you're a part-time resident. If, if you say that you, um, uh, do you work in Woodstock, yes or no, and do you live in the village? And you don't get all of those questions. If you basically say, yes, I'm a full-time resident, we don't ask if you work in Woodstock. We just say, if you know, full-time resident, do you live in the village? If you say, no, I live in a neighboring town, we say, wait, do you work in Woodstock? But we don't ask, do you live in the village? That kind of thing. So the first three questions, very quick, just trying to figure out different segments of people who respond. Here's the first question about the, some of the problems. We start with the problems and we talk about the positives. What have you personally, how often have you personally encountered the following? Daily, weekly, monthly, only during peak events, rarely or never. Sidewalks that are too crowded, difficulty getting a reservation, traffic jams, difficulty finding a parking spot, long lines and poor service, inappropriate behavior. And to what extent have you been bothered by those same five things, uh, five, six things? Not at all, somewhat, a great deal. Now, there's going to be an opportunity for someone to say, those six, I've got a seventh thing. There's, there's a question later that says, what else? Is there something you want to add to the list? And you can. But these are the things that I think we've all heard from lots of people, so or some people, anyway. Now we dive, one question, we dive more deeply into inappropriate behavior. Sorry, the, the, last, the last one here, inappropriate behavior by visitors. Did, did I go through all these? Sorry. Uh, sidewalks that are too crowded, difficulty getting a reservation at a restaurant, traffic jams, difficulty finding a parking spot, long lines and poor service, inappropriate behavior by visitors. To what extent have you been bothered by those same six things? And now one question on diving deeper on inappropriate behavior. Thinking specifically about behavior, how often have you personally observed the following? A belligerent confrontation between a visitor and a community member, public urination, entering onto private property to observe or take photographs, using private property as if it were their own, parking on it, sitting on the lawn furniture, asking to use restrooms, defacing private property, picking flowers, causing damage. And then are there other negative effects that haven't been mentioned? So here's your chance if these five or six things aren't, you know, what, I think this covers most of it, but who knows, people can have a chance to do that. And then we talk more briefly about the benefits from tourism. To what extent do you think each of the following benefits from tourism? Tourism has little effect, tourism creates some benefit, or tourism really helps Woodstock. Helps local stores and restaurants to thrive. Does tourism encourage visitors to consider moving here? Does tourism create a more diverse local experience for residents? Does it help increase property values? And does it help increase the number and quality of activities like festivals and so forth that we can enjoy as local residents? And is there anything else if those, five, if those six things aren't complete, but you think tourism helps in some other way, uh, what, what way is it? And so that talks about what the positives are and what the problems are. And the last two or three questions are really about what might we do about it? So the first question is, what's the best strategy to solve these problems? Reduce or stop marketing to try to reduce the number of tourists. Keep marketing but develop solutions that would address the problems, e.g. more restaurant capacity, more bathroom capacity, more efforts to limit appropriate behavior, making Cloudland Farm Road only you know, private, that, that kind of thing. Do both, reduce marketing, but don't stop it and developing some solutions to minimize the impact. Keep doing what we're doing. There's no need to change the EDC's marketing program. I'm not sure or some other idea. And then finally, 
try to figure out which issues are most important. If, if the town or the EDC were to devote funding to try to solve some of the problems we talked about above, which problem do you think is the most important? Rank these. And those are the same six problems, sidewalks, reservations, traffic jams, et cetera. So just let people say what's really important to them. And if funds are needed, where should the funds come from? From the EDC's marketing budget, from the EDC's other priorities, housing, childcare, rejuvenating downtown, events, from the town or village budget, from private donation. I don't think it's worth devoting funds or some other source. And that's it. You have any other comments? If you'd like to share your email. It takes about five minutes. It's all multiple choice unless you're filling in these, you know, the so that's the survey. John, I have one one question. Patrick, go uh, ahead and then Jeff. If you could scroll down to the you had a comment that said uh, that used the word negative uh in the middle of the survey. Uh yes. This is the open ended. Did we miss anything? Yeah, I, 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 I like the idea. Did we miss anything? I think you should take the word negative out. I think you're lead, you're, you're leading people to a direction. Well, we, uh, we, we have the same, we have the same parallel question. We have a positive. We ask about negative, and then we say, are there any other positive things? I know. I just think you're leading people. This Perhaps. seems Habitus. very biased. Yeah. So biased. I am sorry. This is. I, there should be a I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking too much but Woodstock since the 1890s has been a tourist destination do any people that have moved here understand that the railroad came here and the Woodstock Inn brought people here it just seems so so biased yeah, yes. now, Hold on. Without, without any any discussion of that? Beth, I, I understand that you're hearing from a few people, a few people who have bought houses here. And the other question I had is how do how does one know if someone is having a a belligerent interaction with a tourist or a local? I mean, you don't know, they don't know all local people. It could be someone from Pomfret that comes in that's belligerent. And and who's to say that? How do you know? Let, let, all right, let, let me address, let me address your broader question. I think, I don't think there's an answer to your second question. When you do a survey, how do you know that the person who's responding to the survey knows what they're talking about? I, that would if we you know we we could never do surveys but but you take that risk in any survey but let me address the, the former point we are not debate we are not debating here today we will but we're not debating here whether or not we should be marketing woodstock we're trying to answer a question we're trying to answer a question how concerned is the community about tourism and what are they concerned about we're not leading people to state, we're trying to, we're trying to answer that question. So this survey is focused largely on, well, this survey is focused on answering that question. We are including the question about positive impacts because we're trying to, we're, we're trying to make clear in people's minds that, 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 you know, there's, there's both impacts, but fundamentally we're trying to answer the question, how, you know how um, how much how much how what are the problems, if any, that are caused by tourism? The EDC's marketing group has done nothing until last week to identify or ameliorate the problems. By the way, I'm not being critical of that. We may not have problems. We may there may be four people who think that there are problems and 2,996 who think there aren't. Well, and the problem the problem we ameliorated was was not one of inside Woodstock. It was one in Pomfret, and you know, no, I, no, I, just, I, but my, I really have a tough time with everything being associated with the marketing, uh, and the, it, it's not, not, so sorry. It's, this is not sorry. Uh, hold on, sorry. I apologize for that. We, we, we the, I, I should have said tourism, not marketing. 
Yes. I agreed. We are trying to ask a question, and we do ask the question about community survey on tourism. We're trying to answer the question, is tourism causing problems for Woodstock? It's a, it's a survey about problems. We don't know, we, 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 what we know for sure is a small number of people have complained about the problems. Or, or, or yeah, that's, that's what we know for sure. I, and so we, we, so I have no problem asking about what are the problems? I, I wouldn't, as I said, started off by saying, I wouldn't assume that there are problems. I wouldn't assume that there aren't problems. I think anyone who assumes either of those two things is making a big mistake. And I think this is gonna help us figure out whether there are problems. Once we figure that out, then I think we can decide whether, and if so, how to deal with those problems. And it may be that we say, of course, these are problems, but Woodstock since 1890 has been a tourism community, or we may say something different. But I think it's reasonable for us, I know it's reasonable for us to answer the question, do we have a, a problem? All right, let me go. So uh, I think Jill was first. Jill has disappeared. Okay. Jill, you, can you hear us? You bet. I'm right here. Jill, um, Greta, and Patrick. Okay, I think it would be really helpful uh, to have one of your analysis criteria in question one of whether you're a business owner. Oh, and idea. whether you whether you actually benefit from tourists or you don't benefit from tourists. Well, we have that question. We have that question in the in the merchant survey. We're doing a survey of yeah, merchants. No, no, they're all going to answer this survey too. People live people who are business owners live in the village. And so they have a right to answer this survey. And right. I think you'll want to analyze your answers by whether the individual benefits financially from a tourism or not. Okay, good. Yeah, no, that's an easy question. To, yeah, good point. Okay. Uh, who would I say? Greta and then Patrick. Uh, so kind of going along with what Jill said, I think that um, that question about working could be expanded also to say, do you work remotely from Woodstock for a business located elsewhere? Mm -hmm. I think that's important to know, you know, when people are an answering these questions, if they are getting a paycheck from somewhere else, but they live in Woodstock, um, you know, and work remotely from a home office. Cause just saying, do you work in Woodstock? Some might, people might be like, yeah, I work from home in Woodstock. Does that make sense? You know, I, we could ask, um, I, I'm just wondering, uh, we are just wondering how much time to spend on the, the, the trade. What would be, a, what just very, very quickly, what would be the hypothesis about how that would affect what we, if we learned that, what would it, well, I think that a lot what of might it, what might it teach us? A lot of people who believe that, you know, newcomers or people who have recently bought a home in Woodstock because it's so charming and just live here and don't rely on tourism as part of their so, paycheck or income. You know, they're 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 working for a company in New York, but working remotely from home. It's just it's, 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 it's the I, usefulness I, of the answer. The when you analyze your data by yes, I work here, it's going to be useless unless you know whether the money comes from a Woodstock company that benefits from tourism or just comes from a company in New York. It's not okay, going to well, be that's easy. different. That's I agree. If what we're talking about is the source of the money, we could ask that. That's slightly different from whether you work remotely. So I mean, so for example, you could work remotely for a tourism company that books tours into Woodstock. So, well, so I think that's what I'm it, saying. Right. I'm saying, do you work? Yeah. Do you work from home for a? Yeah. I guess just do you work for a Woodstock-based company? Do you work for a company uh, located elsewhere or something? Okay. Like that? So, but I think if I combine your comment and Jill's comment, we're trying to get access. What what Jill I think is fo what, what is what you were focused on, Greta. Jill's point that are you benefiting financially from Woodstock tourism or not? Is that the yeah. point you were trying to get at? Yes, and I, so I think you need a few more options there instead of just do you work in Woodstock or not? Okay. All right, uh, good. All right. I think that's easy to incorporate as well. Patrick? All right. Uh, on the very beginning where you have, please reflect your own personal experience. Yeah. Take the, take the opinion thing out. You're not looking for opinions. You're looking for fact. So as soon as you say, uh, or your own opinions, I think you're opening up to what, you know, to, to the wrong type of answers. You want, you want factual answers. You don't want opinion answers. Well, actually on some of the questions, we do want opinion answers, like which of these no, things. I understand, but, but if you say it that way, you're going to get opinion on everything. Whereas if they're ranking something, I think that's a little different than if you're saying, give me your opinion. 
I just, I, you know. Okay, again, fair, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. It's, it's yeah. And and then if you go to the section where you, where you ask all the uh, solution ideas for a second. Yeah. One second. Sorry, I'm just trying to get. Yep, no worries. Where we get to the what? The... Where you ask the solutions. You know, how should the, how should the money be spent kind of thing? Yeah. I, I can't remember what number that was. 10, yeah. Okay. Uh, my concern here is that people don't understand what yeah, marketing right. is and how we're marketing. And, and so they're going to make their opinions based on absolutely no understanding of how we market Woodstock and what we're doing and what the marketing program does. So I think it completely biases the whole thing. I agree with you that the people have no idea what their implications are. I, I agree with that. How, and that's why I will, for example, not place much weight on the answer to this question. Okay, personally. that was going to be my, my next thing is if, if, we, if we understand that, then I'm okay with this being here. So long as we don't say, well, everyone says stop marketing Woodstock. Well, so there are some people who suggested this question who may feel differently, but I, I'll just tell you how I would answer it. I don't think I agree with you. I, I don't think I don't, I'm not looking to the community of Woodstock to help, to help at this stage determine what we should do about this. I will look to the community of Woodstock to, to help us determine what to do about it once we get to a list of things that we think could be done about it. <laughs> yeah, cause the, well, some of the things we're doing right now, John, but, we're, we're but, developing a, a component to the application that yeah. will promote events. We're going to use uh, Taste of Woodstock and TEDx as examples of that. And we're also doing the same thing for businesses and adding a business component so that they can participate in it. So these are all things that are like wildly different than just marketing Woodstock. Yeah. All right. Um, Deborah and then Greta, are you raising your hand again or not um, putting your hand down? Okay, no. Deborah. I will actually and Joe. Deborah and then Joe. So. Uh, De Deborah, Joe, and then oh. Greta again. Okay. Um, I think uh, it's important that um, we identify the expectations of what happens with this survey. I understand that what you're saying, John, is you know, you're voting your conscience, you were put here to make decisions based on the information, but we're going out and we're asking for people's opinions, and then they're going to want to know what the results of that that. Um, of that survey is, so we, we are potentially setting ourselves up for the survey said X, but the EDC voted Y, you right. know? And so I, I think there needs to be an expectation um, set. Um, so that's one. And two, if we could go back to the question that was up before. Well, can we about, just address, I'm oh, sorry. Can we just address that, that specifically first? Yes, Are you talking about expectation among EDC members or expectation yeah. among survey respondents? Community. Community. About, about the community. I mean, for me, I've always wanted to bring the community in more, but if it's, if it's done quantitatively like we're doing, which I love, but if it's done this way, there will be an expectation that, okay, we're basically voting on it. Like this is the result of the survey, therefore EDC should vote you know, for its delicate, you know, its people. And um, I think it, it will upset people if we vote very differently from how this comes in. I agree with you. Well, I think we've, yeah, I, I don't know how, how to, how, how would you suggest we, should we tell them that they're going to be upset? How, 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 how would you <laughs> communicate what you just said? Well, I mean, again, I think, it has to do with the language that you're 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 putting in here. Um, so if we could, that's why I wanted to correlate it to that one question. Number ten, uh, John. That was up before. Okay. If you've identified concerns about the impact of tourism, what is the best strategy? Reducing stuff. You're, um, you, the if then that you're setting up is making a correlation that's like that is marketing issues with tourism. Yeah, and this whole thing is about marketing. That, I think to get rid of the question you're, totally. You're, you're connecting it in a way that, that that I think will get us into trouble. Yep. Um, 
Larry, let, let's just stay on this one point before we go on. Larry, do you want to um, identify why? Because you were, a, you know, a supporter of actually, you know. I think of, it has of, to do with verbiage, not the taking out the question, by the way. But I think it has to do with how how we're, um, how we're framing. Yeah. Um, could, can I make a three? Uh, three uh, not, hold on one second, Peter. I've got uh, Larry. I just want to I want Larry to address De Deborah. St we got Deborah, then Joe, then Greta and then Peter. But but on Deborah's first point, she's got a second point. Larry, can you can you um, respond to Deborah's concern? You, you mean the concern that we're um, giving what an expectation, expectation to the community? The uh, expectation question, that they're voting on something and as well no, as the is that question. I, I, is that question 10 is giving that expectation or the survey is giving that expectation? I think it's, I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both, but I'm using 10 as an example. So uh, as the main example. No, I, I, I certainly understand what she's saying. I, I think that there would be um, probably in the introductory language, something that could clearly state that this is just an exploratory type of survey and not to expect that we're, you know, that we're necessarily going. It's not a, it's not a, a vote. It, it's a um, information gathering tool for the EDC. Something I, I you know, I'm not yeah. very artful in. Right. That would. I that think. Would be, I mean, I think that's all you can really that, do. That, that okay. might, that might, that might not solve it for everybody, but there's only so much yeah. you can say. Right. Okay, right. I, I'll I'll put it. I'll will it will affect that. We'll in, add that sentence into the introduction. Um, Deb, you had a second point. Then Joe, Greta, and Peter. Um, it was the number ten of the correlate. We're we're saying okay. Now that you've identified, or if you've identified that tourism is a problem, problem, what should we do? Should we reduce the marketing? Blah blah blah. It it feels as though the correlation is the problems with tourism have to do with our marketing and yeah. I think um, and it may be that it, it's that it's the first thing that you put there um, or um, you know maybe you just switch the order of these not sure keep doing what you're doing you know like do it the opposite way yeah. uh, so that it's not the first thing that comes up well um, that could be one way of doing it um, Larry. I, I, I also just think that the the uh, reduce or stop. I think I just think it's tricky. I, I'm not. I'm not for the language that that's there. I understand what you're getting at. I just. I. I think the language there is is um is not appropriate. Very assumptive. Larry, do you want to respond? Larry, I think was. Yeah. You want to respond I, on that first point in particular? The first. The first option I, under number ten. I have no. I have no problem with changing. I can see the point of uh, changing the order of them. But I thought the genesis of this whole survey was when we started to discuss marketing, uh, we, and it was a hundred thousand dollar budget uh, that, that Patrick came before and we had a lot of debate about it. And the question was, does the community, one of the questions was, was does the community support the level of tourism that we currently have? And um, if not, it, should that affect the, the marketing and the way we market in the marketing budget? So it didn't seem to me too uh, far-fetched to have that as one of the possibilities. Larry, I have a question for you about that though, um, which is that's the reason why we're trying to get information from people um, to then make a decision as opposed to asking if they think we should reduce the marketing because I think one of the things that we established and I don't remember if it's in here and pardon me, I had to step outside really quickly. Um, that we said, are you aware of what the EDC is doing for marketing and what, what is your understanding of what the EDC is doing for marketing? Because until we know that it's an educated opinion, this question means nothing yeah. because they don't know, you know, okay, yeah, it's marketing, but they don't know what we're doing or, or what we've done or, you know. We're actually, so, this almost accusing marketing. Well, I'm, it's not even about it's not even about the accusing. I understand how you feel that way, Patrick, but it's it's just that it's not a valid answer if they, it's a knee jerk. Re oh, shit. I think I just lost electricity. Um, a knee jerk reaction 
without the information um, of what we're doing for them to say, oh yeah, we should stop doing marketing. They don't, if they don't know what we're doing. Yeah, and what the benefits of it are. All right, let, I think you explained, that's a, a good point. Let's let's do this. Let me, this is Joe, Greta and Peter. Let's give them a chance to comment. And then I'm gonna come back to question, come back to at some point, we may just decide whether to include question 10 or not. Um, and we may just have to vote on that because um, I think we kind of need to move on. So let's, Joe, then Greta, then Peter. Uh, in the first place, to address Patrick's statement about, well, they don't know anything about marketing and they don't know how marketing works. I don't think they care. And I don't think that's reason for having the survey. It's if they know the intricacies of the marketing process, what it's achieved, what it doesn't achieve, and, and in my opinion, and just my opinion, this, this, this form is much too funneled. It's like, bring it right down to, it's almost like you're applying for a driver's license. So many multiple questions, but not enough, in my opinion, of an opportunity to express yourself. Yeah. Just how do you feel about this or that? How do you feel about what's going on? How do you feel about what is happening to the town? Let them actually speak rather than check me off a box. I think more of an opportunity of that should be available. That's my opinion. Okay, uh, Greta and then Peter. Uh, just really quickly, I, I'm i of the opinion number 10 should probably just be omitted. Um, for exactly the reasons that you were speaking of. And I agree with Deborah, you, you, you could change up the verbiage, but I think it should just be omitted. But my um, my previous thought that I forgot to mention earlier is on question eight, um, if you can scroll up, please. There's a, a, yeah, so halfway down, I'm not a big fan of the way it's worded when it says creates a more diverse local experience for residents. Um, if that's if that is like meant to say that there are more events or something like that, I think we should be specific. It just seems a little no. bit. No, no, it's 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 about it, it, no. This the events is down here increases the number and okay. quality of activities. Yeah, so I guess that uh, creates a more diverse local experience for residents, just as far as like bringing in at more people. Yeah, um, exposes exposes the local community to a more diverse group of people. Okay. Yeah. Or to I, an expanded group of people. Is it okay. diversity, John, or is it just there's a there's a fine line there? What, yeah, I think I, I think it's a weird. Uh, I I'm, it's maybe you need to change the word diverse to something because diverse to me broader. broader. Yeah, yeah, that sounds better. Well, we could just take it out. I mean, the, the, the we'll never be able to have a complete list in part because yeah. we didn't do focus groups. Yeah. We'll never be able to have a complete list. But and so we ask, are there uh, is there anything else? So we don't have to worry about it being complete. One thing we could do if that's confusing to people, and I, I agree that of the five, it's the most confusing or abstract. Yeah, it's a little we could vague. Just take and, it out. Yeah. Why don't yeah, we just take it out? Okay. Peter, you're muted. Peter, could you go to the top? Yeah, one second. Sorry, I just. Okay, um, we at Borkstock have been wrestling with this. We did surveys last year, and we did another survey this year, and it's it's not easy. Um, I thought you might want to know um, the tenure of the individual with regard to Woodstock. I mean, how long they've lived here? Or lived here, or been part time, or it would be it wouldn't be living; it would be your involvement in Woodstock, something like that. You might want to know how many in their household okay um you might want to know their opinion of why tourists come to woodstock that's an excellent one well yeah oh. What what would we do with the information about number of people in the household? Let's just take that as uh, well. Well, you're 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 talking about whether if there's if there's more than two people, it's a family. Okay, if it's a one one person, uh, it's a retiree. Okay, no, no, excuse me, that might be wrong. But you want to know whether it's a family or not. 
Right. I guess my question is, what would be your hypothesis about how we would get different results if someone was a, like, do you think that families would be uh, more interested in traffic problems and retired people would be more interested oh. in reservations and restaurants? Well, no, we, we, we found in the survey this, this year was that it actually was very interesting that they all asked, they all responded the same way. In other words, that the hypothesis that they would answer differently was, was, was reject you know was was right. um, contradicted by the results i yeah. guess my instinct is is that if we think that the, the reason why to keep my instinct would be the reason why to keep these demographic questions simple to short is to shorten the survey and increase right. response rate if yeah. unless there's a hypothesis as jill had jill and greta had indicated earlier there was a hypothesis a reasonable hypothesis that people who benefit from tourism might you know be in their work might answer very differently than people who are employed in some other way. So there's a hypo so if we have a hypothesis that a segment of people is different, we should try to identify them. But if the hypothesis is that they're the same, then I would rather leave the question yeah. out. Then, okay, then then I would, uh, then I think the tenure, there may be a, a good hypothesis for tenure. But, but I, I think I would put my money on the that third question is, why do you think people come to Woodstock? Yes. Uh, with a multiple choice, or even if you want to, a rank order. Okay. But, and what would we do? I, I guess the question is, how would that help us to identify what actions the EDC could take? Well, uh, let's see what they like, why they're coming. It gives you that list of why they're coming, and then compare that to what they say the problems are. But let's say that they say that they're coming for reasons one, two, and three. What would we do because of that? Well, you you would uh, you would be able to respond the results. You would be able to 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 understand and respond to the population with your report. That it is our it is our perception, you know, based on the, the survey results. This is how the respondents perceive understand tourism in the in the in well, okay the sorry I, now i understand we're doing a survey of visitors we, we i don't i i we, oh, oh we're, no this is this is no 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 this is this is getting an understanding of where we in woodstock think the, uh, the, the tourism is coming but I, mean, I understand that but what i'm saying is that we can actually find out the real answer to that question like no, what, no, people, John, what, he's, what he's trying to say is let's just say people one of the answers they say is they come here for events and then in questions later on, they say, don't want, there's too many people here for events. You know, then you get that correlation. You start to understand a little bit about. But we're going to understand, happen. but we're going to understand that when the visitors tell us they come here, the visitors you, yeah, tell yeah, us they yeah, come yeah, here that's for the visitors. That's the visitor's point, opinion. This is the community yeah. person's opinion. But who cares okay. about what the community person's opinion is on that question? When right. we can ask, in other words, it's like saying, let's, let's all do a survey. Is Joe D, what does Joe Di Natale think about this survey? What do we think? Why don't we just ask Joe what he thinks? Uh, yeah, you're not understanding what I'm saying, but that's okay. Okay. It's not the, no, no, I guess my point is that we, if the tourists say they're all coming for, for events. But this is community people, perception. It's not about the tourists. This is what the community thinks people are coming here for. I, I, and then, I, and then what they're complaining about and, and the two may may synchronize or they may not. Well, well let's say they synchronize. Let, let's say they, what, what, what would, I guess I'm just trying to understand what would we do with the answer? I, I understand that's the question. You got people and talking on both sides of the mouth. You got people talking, it's the same way, reason why you ask a question three different ways, because then you get you get the real perception of what people are saying. So, but if it's not that important, John, I, I, yeah, I can okay. go with that. All right, okay. All right, are there any other, are there other comments? Um, about this survey, I'd like to propose a motion. How could I could I ask how it's being distributed? Uh, we're working on that. I think we're. I'm probably going to ask for a budget to have it be distributed to to send a postcard to every resident, as well as posting the link in the listserv and and uh, and um, and in the standard. Okay. John, I strongly suggest that there's more of an opportunity for people to write how they feel about what's going on about tourism. There's, a, there's so much of multiple choice, fill in the box. They got, I think, two questions. 
about expressing how they feel, positive or negative. No, we've got, do you have any other comments? Have already... That's Wait. my feeling. Yeah, do we have any other comments? It. The, the, the analyzing long written out stuff is, is difficult. So I, what? I, That's what we're gonna do. I, <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah, I, I appreciate that, Joe. I guess I don't agree. I, I, I don't, I, I, I just right. released, but, but we could vote. I think we're going to take two votes. I'm going to suggest we take two votes. One is whether or not to include question 10 and whether it is whether or not to go forward with this survey or to continue to edit it. And Joe, that leaves then the, open the possibility of making the changes you described or any other changes and so forth. So, okay. um, so I'm just, so, and, and that's fine. I, I, you know, we, reasonable people can disagree about this. So I'm just going to, ask first, because we talked a lot about question 10. Um, if that's okay, I mean, if unless people have a different, well, I'll, I'll make a motion then to say that, you know, um, that we should, um, uh, to be perfectly honest, I think we should take out question 10. I agree with the criticisms of it. So I'll make a motion that we eliminate question 10 from the survey. I'll second it. Yeah. Right. So is there, is there further discussion about whether to include it or not? Larry, I know again, you've been, you know, you, you've you wanted to include this type well, of question. I'm gonna vote there may be others. I'll be by myself. All right. Is there any other discussion about question 10? All right, all those in, the motion is to exclude question 10. All those in favor say aye. 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 Deborah, oh sorry, all, all those opposed. De Deborah, are you there? Yeah, no, I said I for the. You uh, said I. Yeah. Just, not, it looks like right. just Larry. Okay, and any, I think that's everyone, right? So there's no one abstaining. All right, so the motion passes six to one. So then the second motion is to is to is to make the following is to I'm going to uh, move that we move forward with the survey with the following changes. The elimination of question 10. Um, uh, asking in the upfront section about the demographics, are you a merchant? A question about working remotely and in and or in the tourism industry. I, I apologize, but we're going to have to offline work out the wording of that thing. What Greta and Joe were talking about, eliminating the word opi the opinions point in the introduction, making clear that this is not a decision or a vote; it is a survey to provide the EDC for information in the in the introduction, eliminating more diverse experience in the benefits of tourism. Asking the number of years that you are have lived in Woodstock. Or been involved in Woodstock. Or, or what was it? Or or been involved in Woodstock. Been involved fine. because you could be a part-time person. Yeah, fine. Lived in or been involved years, full time or part time. Okay. With those changes. If we vote yes, then we'll go ahead with the survey and, and you'll be delegating to me the, the small edits that are needed to do that. If we vote no, then we'll work on a process. And, and I would like to, th then what we'll need, really need to do just from a timing point of view is, is work between now and the next meeting to, to get consensus. Cause I, I, I mean, we could wait until the August meeting. It's not gonna be the end of the world, but we really do need feedback between the meetings. If, if this survey is not acceptable, then, then I just really like to encourage people to, um, to, to work to help make the edits in between so that we can have these kinds of work out and so forth. And so that we can be pretty assured that we'll be able to approve what we have next month. So, um, and again, I, I'm in favor of moving ahead now, but it's not the, it's not, um, it's not going to ruin our initiative or our program if we were to wait one more month and to work on whether it's Joe, your concerns or other, you know, Peter's other suggestions that I didn't accept in my motion. So I, I, with seconds, take the vote. <laughs> all right, that's the motion. Is there any further discussion about this? All right, fine. Then all those in favor of moving forward with the modifications that I propose, please say aye. Aye. 
Deb said I. Deb said I. Larry, were you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's disappointing to me. Okay. Are there any opposed? Okay. All right. So we will move forward with these three surveys. Um, I don't know if we'll have results. I think we'll have to, uh, next month, we will have an update on where we are, um, how many respondents we have and, um, and where we are. And, um, and we'll then decide you know, how, exactly how to proceed, how long to keep it open, whether to you know, encourage more responses and so forth. And so um, we'll see, I think we're gonna learn a lot um, from, you know, with, I think we're gonna learn a ton. Um, and I also think we have difficult decisions to make uh, because I think there are a lot of factors that these surveys don't take into account and can't, and that we as an EDC are gonna have to think through and decide on and so forth. So that's where I think we're headed, so. Okay, thanks. Um, are there any other issues or uh, any other in updates from any of the other working groups or any, any other topics, Patrick? I'll just give you a quick update that I mentioned a little bit before. Uh, you know, when when I proposed the the program that we put together, you know, I had kind of seen it as a you know one year, two year, three year, five year kind of thing. And what we're working on this year is creating uh, a process that we can have different events promoted through the program, uh, specifically in the emails that we send out. Uh, and in some of the advertising uh, as well. So we're we're going to test two different events, and the two different are picked very specifically. Uh, the first one is Taste of Woodstock because it's specifically a town event, and the second is TEDx because it's more of an event like Bookstock uh, and so forth. So the two types of events, and then the second thing we're building in is a a way for the businesses to participate in a program that will go out in. Uh, late November, Dece early December, to drive traffic to the local businesses from a uh, more regional uh, direction and not from afar. So we can you know, try to tr drive shopping basically in Woodstock during the holiday season. So those we're building that in so that these different, uh, there'll be a form that the, the, whether it's an event or businesses can fill out uh, to participate uh, through the program. So a direct way uh, to have the, the program help the, the specific community events and, and businesses. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, any, other, any other updates? Okay, hearing none, can we have, uh, oh, sorry, I, I did wanna add one thing. I, I in, in passing, which is not the way to do it, um, Greta has agreed to join the marketing working group. Thank you, Greta. You've been working with that merchants group that uh, Beth and has launched with Jeff. And um, this is a natural, I think, continuation of it. Um, as Patrick steps aside and moves to Menden, um, I think it's I will important. Still be, I'll still be in the working group, though, just so you know, for, for a while. I want to shepherd this stuff. And Greta, you and I definitely need to talk. Great. <laughs> Okay, so Greta, thank you for stepping up and doing that. And um, thanks everybody for your input on this. I think we've got a lot of work ahead of us and I think we're gonna learn a ton from this. So can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Is there a second? No? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Hey, Greta. Yeah. Greta, can you uh, send me your contact info? And we'll see if we can set something up, okay? Absolutely, I'll send you an email. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, bye-bye.